Yep, my wife's gonna be upset, but soup was and still is my first love. I mean, what's better on a cold day than a big bowl of hot, hearty soup? There's nothing out there. So I'm gonna show you how to make a delicious beef and barley soup loaded up with root veggies, beef stew meat, and tons of barley. I know you will love this recipe. Beef and barley soup has been around since the 17th century, and it's a derivative of scotch broth, which is another soup made with lamb. Remember, when a lot of these old classic recipes were made, they used what they had on hand, so everything that's available, and they tried to make it as delicious as possible. This recipe has been sort of tweaked a little bit over the years as produce becomes more available, but I'm gonna try to keep this one pretty dang classic. The first thing we are gonna do is a little bit of prep. Here we go. Starting with some yellow onions. I've got two small ones here. You can absolutely use just one large one or even white or a sweet Vidalia would be great. Slice off the end, slice it in half, and then of course peel off that outer layer. Now what I'm going to do is medium to large dice it. You could roughly chop it too, that's totally fine. Next, I've got some leeks. To prepare these, you slice off the end and then go right until it starts to turn green. It's not advised to eat any more than this. It starts to get really bitter and tough. Next, slice it in half and then quarter them. Turn that nice little stack and then thinly slice them just like this. This is absolutely perfect. Leeks have great flavor and I promise you will like it. Now, leeks are pretty dirty, as in they've got a lot of dirt and mud in them sometimes. So what I'm gonna do is take them right over to a colander, spray them down with just some cold water, make sure to get any unwanted dirt or mud off of it. This is great. Just give your colander a little shake. We are gonna set it to the side and now I'm gonna pull out some bacon. Traditionally, in this recipe, you might see some pork. That could be pork belly or even some smoked bacon. What I'm going to do is thickly slice it. It can be pretty big chunks like this. This is, this is absolutely perfect. Once it is sliced, we're gonna set it to the side on a plate because we have one more thing to prep here and that's our meat. I've got some beef stew meat. It was on sale, it was pretty high quality, it was prime beef, and I thought this would be a great chance to use this because it's usually fairly cheap. Now, these are pretty big cubes and I want them to cook a little bit faster, so I'm gonna trim this down even more until very small bite-sized pieces. One, this will help it cook faster, and two, no one likes to eat a big piece of beef and then sit there and chew on it. This isn't overly tender beef. Usually, they are scraps cut down, so you need to cook it, and if they're small, it will just cook that much faster. Now just finish up all the beef and once it is finished, we're gonna take it off the cutting board and put it on a plate because it is gonna go over to a cooktop. Because we cut up raw beef and bacon and need to prepare vegetables, I always advise, please take that cutting board over to the sink, wash it down with soap and hot water and bring it back to prep some more. And let me stop and say this, you don't have to use beef stew meat like I did, although it's always available at the local grocery store. Maybe you have an uncooked roast in the freezer that you want to use. Maybe you have a cooked big old piece of meat in the freezer that you need to use up. This is a great opportunity to do so. Use what you have or find out what's on sale too. This is going to cook for a long time and meat is going to tenderize. So definitely try that now. Go ahead and grab the bacon and the beef. We are heading back over to the cooktop. I've got a very large pot over medium heat. We're gonna add the bacon. The goal here is to render a little bit of the fat and make sure the bacon is nice and crisp, just like you see here. Once they are browned and cooked through, we're gonna start removing some of the bacon lardons because we need that fat to cook in. So get all the bacon out there as much as you possibly can. If there are a few stragglers, no problem. We're gonna put them in a bowl, set it to the side, now grab that cut up beef stew meat, add it right to the pot into the rendered bacon fat. What we're looking to do here on medium high heat, so turn it up just a little bit more, is to brown the outside and cook it through. Now because they are small pieces, this will cook fairly quickly, maybe four to six minutes is what you're looking at. Once the beef is browned and cooked through, I'm just going to empty the pot, get all of that goodness out there and put it right on a plate because we'll put it back in in a later time, just actually in a few minutes. Now put that pot right back onto the burner and if there's enough rendered meat fat in there, you can use it or if you need a little bit more, add in some olive oil. At this point, we're gonna grab those onions that we cut up, 
and get all of that goodness right in there. And then of course, what we want to do is add our leeks in there at the same time. They will brown and they will caramelize just like the onions will. Go ahead and grab a spoon and start mixing everything together. We're going to cook it on low heat. It's going to take in between 30 to 35 minutes for these to caramelize. I just have to say, other than time that it takes for flavors to infuse in soup, the other most important thing is caramelizing the onions. You get all those natural sugars out of the onions. It just enhances the flavor of the soup so much, makes it richer, more flavorful. You get a little bit of that natural sugar. It is so good. So please, please, please take the time to do this. Now we're going to prep up the veg. This is great timing while those onions are caramelizing to prepare up everything else and all root vegetables, my friends, starting with some carrots. So go ahead and peel the carrots. Next, what we want to do is medium to large dice them. We want the soup to be really hearty. And then I've got some celery stalks, which I've cut in half and now am slicing into medium to large dices. This is excellent. Now for some extra root vegetables, this is totally optional. I just love the flavors. I'm starting with a parsnip, which I'm going to peel. Again, next I'm going to medium to large dice that parsnip. And then another great flavored root vegetable is a turnip. Lots of awesome flavor in here. Again, peel the outside, slice off the ends. And what we're going to do is medium to large dice this and set it to the side. Some of the few things that are different from the original recipe that I just used are things like celery, parsnips, turnips. Now, I'm not saying they've never been featured in a beef and barley soup because, again, it was all about availability when this soup was made. Maybe they only had parsnips. Maybe they only had rutabaga. When you add additional root veggies like this, you're not changing the pedigree of this recipe. You're enhancing it a little bit, but you're also just adding more root vegetables, which is, I always say, a great way to get kids to eat soup because you could jam pack up the vegetables. It's awesome to do it, just adding more nutrients, and it is just so good. I definitely recommend adding a few. You don't have to, but that's just where I stand. Now, I also want to add garlic to this, so quickly, I'm going to run some garlic cloves through a garlic press. You know me, I'm done chopping garlic, garlic press for me it is. Now head right back over to that cooktop. We are going to have a look at our onions, give them a quick stir. They look fantastic, so much deliciousness in here. Again, I can't say it enough, take the time to caramelize the onions and leeks. It will be well worth your time, my friends. Now at this point, we're going to add in the garlic. Maybe cook for one to two minutes. I always say once you can smell garlic, it is finished cooking. That's how quickly it can turn and burn. Now we're going to add back in the cooked beef that we cooked up and set to the side, followed up by all of those amazing medium to large diced vegetables that we prepared. And at this point, we're going to add back in the bacon, hit it with a few bay leaves, and then grab some good beef stock and add it in there. Look, if you don't have beef stock or don't have access to it, you could use chicken stock or even water. Should be just fine in this recipe. We are going to give it a little stir and we're going to cook it for about 45 to 60 minutes on low heat. Let the meat and vegetables tenderize. We're going to come back, give it a little stir, see how things are doing. Maybe even taste a piece of beef or vegetable to make sure it's nice and tender. And at this point, we're going to add in our pearl barley. Just go ahead and pour the whole thing in there. Be sure to get a spoon, mix all of these things together. It's going to take about 30 to 35 minutes on low heat for the pearl barley to crack and soften up, and then everything else will be finished. I already know you're going to holler at me and say you did not rinse the barley. Now, for me, if you've been following me for a little bit, you know that I don't really rinse rice that often either. But barley has such unique grape flavor, I believe it enhances the soup more. You get more of that barley flavor, which is delicious. Now, you can rinse it. Totally up to you for me. I just think it's better. Also, usually when I make soups that have a starch, like with pasta or noodles or anything like that, I cook them separate. But barley is so hearty, so earthy, it can stand up to really long cooking times. That's why I added it right in the soup, and you definitely can as well. Now. Let's go ahead and come back, see if our barley is broken down and cracked. Let's have a look. You can see that it's perfect. It's soft. It's tender. It's chewy. It's so good. It opens up and is just a wonderful, wonderful grain to use. 
add a good amount of sea salt or kosher salt and some fresh cracked black pepper. It will greatly enhance this recipe. And for herbs, what I like to do is add about a quarter cup of chopped fresh parsley, about a tablespoon of chopped fresh thyme, and a tablespoon of chopped fresh rosemary. Mix all that goodness in there and gosh, just have a taste really quick because it's super, super good. It's very rich. You will absolutely love it. Once it is completely stirred together, then it's time to start serving it. So I'm going to take it off of the burner, take it over to the countertop. This looks absolutely fantastic. Can't wait to get into this, my friends. And I know I've said it before, but when it comes to using fresh herbs, you always end with fresh herbs. Another herb you could use instead of all three of these is sage, or maybe add sage along with parsley. That would be a very classic ingredient as well. But also if you only have dry herbs, you wanna add those in when I add in the beef stock. So do it then. You start with dry herbs or you finish with fresh herbs that comes to all cooking. And that's just like everything. It's all about those fundamental cooking techniques. Knowing when to use fresh or dry herbs, being sure to caramelize up your onions. I can't say it enough. You apply these things to all your cooking, to my comies, my chefs and training out there, your food will just be that much better. I promise you, that is my promise to you. Now, of course, we're gonna plate up in slow-mo. What I'm gonna do is just put some into a pretty large bowl. Well, because I'm hungry and I love this beef stew. Stack it high, my friends, and then finish off with just a few more herbs. And if you want, why not grab a glass of red wine? Always makes things better. And my oh my, check out this beauty. incredibly easy to make again use what you have for the meat or if there's only a certain amount of root vegetables available use those i promise you you cannot fail the soup is amazing be sure to subscribe to my channel like and share this video and definitely check out this video i made it just for you i promise you'll love it i'll see you on there